What's up, ballers? And welcome to another video that lets you forget what a hole the world has become. We pick up after the 2024 season where we improve somewhat from the previous years, but I think we still have a bit of a ways to go before we can be a true powerhouse. We're gonna get there. We have to because the Rockies have still never won a World Series. No rings. Okie dokie. To start off, here are the before and after personnel hires. I decided to fire my trainer again because I saw someone that I thought was more fit for the job. For salary arbitrations, I offer the usual contracts near estimates with one exception. I offer William Contreras a $46 million deal over four years. I like his bat, but wish his catching ability was a bit better, but given what's available, I'll take it. I decide on giving Ed Luz Diaz a three-year deal worth $33.3 million. I think I'm going to regret this. So I can't wait to see this guy. Here comes Edwin Diaz. He's maybe one of the greatest closers in history. The Mets since the beginning of time. All they needed was this guy. <laughs> one of the biggest games. Hey. <laughs> oh my God, Dan! That boy got fire. That boy got fire. I make some trades, the first with the Brewers who send Josh Hader retaining 15%, Erovis Alcantara, a minor leaguer, and cash for Blake Snell, Justin Dunn, and a minor leaguer. Snell seems to be regressing and I needed to dump him. The next trade is with the White Sox. I send Tanner Allen, Alex Fiedo, Francisco Morales, and a minor leaguer for Luis Robert retaining 55% and Miller Plyman. If we take a look at Luis Roberts' ratings, he's not a terrific fielder but has decent batter ratings and might be a decent addition. I make an offer to the Mets, sending Seth Beer, Jordan Brewer, and a minor leaguer for Mookie Betts, again retaining 20%. And if you remember, the Red Sox are already retaining 10% of his salary, so this is good trade bait. And of course, the Mets take it because it's the Mets. And of course, I trade him and Robert Stevenson to the Brewers, receiving Aaron Ashby and a minor leaguer in return. These last two moves were designed to open up some payroll space and getting some pitching depth. Lastly, a trade with the newly minted El Paso Blasters, sending Estevan Florial and Tommy Pham for Ben Bowden in a minor leaguer. You might be wondering where Tommy Pham came from if you've been keeping up with the series. You'll see in a minute. Speaking of El Paso, and I'm jumping ahead a bit here, but when I was submitting my protection list for the upcoming expansion draft, I noticed one of my minor league pitchers, Angel Schvelli, had an ERA of 666. I guess Satan was an angel, right? Or the devil! To prepare for the Rule 5 draft, I add Nick Frazzo, Blaze Alexander, Garrett Mitchell, Ryan Bruno, and Reuther Hernandez to the 40-man roster. A bit later, we discover that we've been named Manager of the Year. About fucking time. Hey man, I hate to admit this, but this is my first trophy. We reach the free agency period and here is some of the available talent we have to choose from. I mentioned before that I had traded Tommy Pham. I had signed him to a two-year deal worth $9 million with the intent of using him as a trade chip. And well, there you go. Elvis Alvarado accepts a two-year deal worth $5.5 million. Nothing really interesting here. I decide to go a little nuts and offer Tyler Glasnow a deal worth $210 million over six years. He was quite insistent at getting top dollar. I don't have a spending problem. For more trade bait, I offer Jordan Hicks a $16 million deal over four years. We already know he doesn't do well in Colorado, but he's cheap enough that he might be useful later on. For the Rule 5 draft, I go after an interesting pick in Casey Kalick. Taking a look at his ratings, he's an extreme flyball pitcher, but has great stuff and a wicked slider. This guy might actually be pretty good. We reach spring training, and the only thing of note is Garrett Cole being injured for two weeks. Could be worse. We reach opening day and after the usual demotions, here are the pitching assignments and lineup that I'm left with. I did see something on the waiver wire that piqued my interest. Tanner Rainey was placed on waivers and seemed to have all the hallmarks I was looking for in a pitcher except for some control issues. I frankly don't understand why a team would get rid of such a cheap pitcher with this kind of potential. I didn't get him despite claiming him, but I felt it was interesting to share. As per the usual tradition, I play the opening day game and here is the lineup that I went with. This was a good old-fashioned pitcher's duel, or at least it was until the bottom of the sixth inning when Nolan Arenado smashed a baseball over the outfield wall for two runs. This ended up sealing the deal for us as we beat the Cubs 3-1. Great start all around. Shortly after, Garrett Cole is ready to be activated from the injured list. I make a trip with the Padres, sending Edluz Diaz, Aaron Ashby, and a minor leaguer for Andres Munoz and two minor leaguers. I really just wanted a better closer, and although I doubt Munoz is it, I figured it was worth a try. These are my new pitching assignments. 
Josh Hader is out for seven weeks, and I call up Matt Cronin to replace him. These are my new pitching assignments. We enter May with the 20 and 13 record, a 606 win percentage first in the division. I thought we'd do better this season, but I don't know if this is where we're meant to be or not. These are my pitching stats, as well as my batting stats. I make no roster moves at this time. Mike Clevenger is out for 11 months. That's just fucking perfect. I call up Elvis Alvarado in his place. These are my new pitching assignments. Tyler Glasnow is out for five to six weeks. That monster contract is really paying off. I call up Miller Plyman in his place. And these are my new pitching assignments. And Jonathan Lewisiga is suspended. Go home! Zach Little is out for two months, and I call up Juan Mejia in his place, but at this point, I need to make a trade. And I find a worthwhile deal with the Dodgers, who send Manchu Chu, Jimmy Glowinky, and two minor leaguers for Andres Munoz, Kyron Paris, and a minor leaguer. I don't plan on keeping Chu, but I really wanted the minor leaguers. One of these minor leaguers, Nelson Jacobo, has awesome gap potential and is a pretty good defender at center field. When we make our World Series push, hopefully next season, he will certainly come in handy. These are my new pitching assignments as well as my lineup. We reach June having regressed to a 31 and 28 record of 541 win percentage first in the division. This is really where I thought we would be right about now. These are my pitching stats, as well as my batting stats. I make a trade with Tampa Bay, sending Jordan Hicks, Manchu Chu, and two minor leaguers for Britton McKay, retaining 35%, Colby White, Victor Vansois, and Ian Il Choi. You'd think between Snell and Glass now that I'd stop trading for pitchers from Tampa Bay, but no, I will seemingly never learn. To make this trade work, I demote Ross Adolph and Matt Cronin, as well as call up Vladimir Restituyo. These are my new pitching assignments, as well as my lineup. Draft time, and we have the 29th pick this time around, and the only thing of interest is our second round pick wants significantly more than $9 million. So I offer him 12. On him. On him. On him. Josh Hader is no longer injured and is sent on a rehab assignment. Shortly after, Tyler Glasnow is also sent on a rehab assignment. Hopefully our pitching is just a couple of weeks away from improving. Mid-season goals time and the owner has mixed feelings about my performance. Why do I give a shit anymore? Yeah, you know what? Yeah, I do. I do want to express myself. Okay, then I don't need 37 pieces of flair to do it. All right, there's my flair, okay? And this is me expressing myself, okay? There it is. I hate this job. I hate this goddamn job and I don't need it. After a couple of weeks, it's time to call up Josh Hader and Tyler Glasnow and I demote Victor Francois and Juan Mejia to make room. These are my new pitching assignments. Miller Plyman is out for five weeks and I call up Jake Eater in his place. These are my new pitching assignments. We arrive at July roughly in the same place with the 46 and 41 record of 529 win percentage first in the division. I've got to say the fact that we're floating just north of 500 and are somehow in first place is rather interesting. These are my pitching stats as well as my batting stats. Taking a look at Garrett Cole, he's currently in the midst of the worst season of his career. Currently, he sports a 561 ERA, a 378 BABIP, and is giving up 2.4 home runs per 9 innings. Comparing his current stats to previous years, batters are making more contact with his pitches and are hitting them much harder. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Coors. Nah, the previous years were decent. I think he's just having a bad year, possibly because I activated him rather than sending him on a rehab assignment. I make a trade with the San Antonio Jackalopes, sending Jonathan Loisiga, Jack Eater, and a minor leaguer for Harrison Francis, Jose Chambuco, and a minor leaguer. Loisiga was struggling, but taking a look at Harrison Francis, he has great stuff potential and might be a decent addition to the staff. These are my new pitching assignments. Zach Little is no longer injured and is sent on a rehab assignment. I make a trade with the Dodgers, sending Elvis Alvarado and Colby White for Trevor Betancourt and a minor leaguer. I wanted to make room for one of my minor league pitchers who's been doing rather well. And that minor league pitcher is Ricky Cabrera who is called up to the major leagues. These are my new pitching assignments. We enter August having made some improvement to a 65 and 50 record, a 565 win percentage, first in the division. Our pitching has definitely improved as of late, as you can see here from these pitching stats. And on that note, here are my batting stats as well. I make no roster moves at this time. Per the usual tradition, I play the game after the trade deadline, and here is the lineup that I went with. 
This was a pretty well-pitched game all around. Luis Robert smashes two-run home run in the top of the eighth to get us on the board after our offense had floundered all game long. But unfortunately, this turned out to be the only offense of the game as we go down to the Reds 2-3. to three. Rather disappointing. Jose Jambuco was out for two to three months. God damn it. And I call up Zach Little in his place. These are my new pitching assignments. Shortly after that, Ricky Cabrera is out for six weeks. Here we go with the injuries. And I call up Juan Mejia in his place. These are my new pitching assignments. Miller Plyman is no longer injured and is sent on a rehab assignment. We reach September having played respectable to an 80 and 64 record, a 556 win percentage, second in the division, and currently claim the first wild card seed. We still have a shot at winning the division, but as long as we make the playoffs, I will be happy. These are my pitching stats, as well as my batting stats. For roster expansion, I call up Miller Plyman from his rehab assignment as well as Blaze Alexander. These are my new pitching assignments, as well as my lineup. The only thing of interest during the month was devoting Ricky Cabrera to AAA after he was no longer injured. We end the season having done pretty well with an 89-73 record, a 549 win percentage, second in the division, and have claimed the first wildcard seed. For the second year in a row, we will be going to the playoffs. I guess that's something. These are my pitching stats to end the season, as well as my batting stats. One player of note was Nolan Arenado, who we really haven't checked on during this run, but this season he really broke out with a 305 batting average, 381 OBP, 1.026 OPS, and 8.5 wins above replacement. Given that he's now aging and should be regressing, it sure seems like he had one, if not the best season of his career. And just taking a look at the league leaders, you'll see that he led the National League in wins above replacement. MVP. Hey, I got an idea. The Rockies should give you a long-term extension. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I appreciate it. Thanks, I appreciate it. We must set our playoff roster, and here are the pitching assignments and lineup that I went with. And for the wild card game, we are facing the Diamondbacks, and this is the lineup that I chose. And this game was definitely a close one. Jumping to the end of the game, we're down in the bottom of the ninth, two to one with three outs left to go. First up to bat is Julio Rodriguez, our star outfielder. First pitch, he deposits the baseball over the wall to tie the game, two all. Next up, Nolan Arenado singles into left field. Andrew Vaughn fails to move him over after that, one out. Luis Robert comes up and promptly strikes out. Two away and we're one out from extra innings. But our backup catcher Joe Mack decides to keep the game alive with a bloop in the right center and moves Nolan to third. The pitcher spot is up and I put in Isaiah Urbina to pinch hit. The most important move I could make in this game. He then walks it off with the liner into right field. We were three outs away from losing and walk it off on a pinch hit single. Unbelievable, folks. I did it! I did it! I won! We beat the Diamondbacks 3-2, thanks mostly to Forrest Whitley going eight innings with only two earned runs. What a great clutch performance all around. But our luck just runs out as we lose to the Cubs in four games in the NLDS. At least we did better than last season, and I think we're still due for improvement, so this was not a waste in my opinion. As far as who won the World Series, the Dodgers win in seven games. I guess that's something. What that something is, I'm not quite sure. To end the season, the owner is happy with my performance. Yeah, that's it. Nothing else of importance, surprisingly. But you know, I have confidence that next season we're going to be a fucking juggernaut. So like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe so you can be alerted when the next video comes out because you know you want to see it. You can lie to me, but you can't lie to yourself.